good morning. This is the time when I talk about the comics that I've read and perhaps show some of my artwork. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different because uh, we've actually reached a, a period in time when the newspaper comics here pretty much has died. And by this I don't mean the 1990s or the 2000s, I mean the 1950s. I, I'm not even going, going to flip through here. Comics, comic strips at least, they, they kind of died after the war. Newspapers really did not adapt in the way that they had adapted in previous generations. In the 1930s, newspapers were sort of a combination of the news, journals, uh, literary, uh, Facebook gossip, and art, kind of all bundled into one, uh, with morning papers, evening papers. Uh, some of them even had afternoon papers. Some of them had three papers a day. Each town had many newspapers. Uh, newspapers did have a, a little bit of a hiccup when radio was invented, but they did adapt. But newspapers really did not adapt to television. So in the 1950s, newspapers started shrinking in size, we started losing evening papers, and the first fat casualty were the American comic strip. So in this book, The History of the Comic Strip, basically the story is over, and we still have four or five more decades to go. It's because there's just not a lot to tell after the 1950s. We have a few shining uh, stars, like Peanuts and Pogo, but, but honestly, newspapers were just being decimated, the comics were shrinking, the good artists were leaving for uh, comic books. Um, it's really at this point that the book should have transitioned to the story of the comic book and the manga, because the newspaper strip really just became vestigial. Now fortunately there is going to be a little bit of a renaissance in the 1980s. We will have the trinity of Farside, Bloom County, and um, Calvin and Hobbes. And then at the very, very end, I would say that Cul-de-Sac by Richard Thompson was sort of the last great newspaper comic strip. But really, it, it's, it's, it's very tra- this is, a, this is a tragedy. It's a tragedy, it's a horror show. Once we get to the 1950s, and it's so sad because comics were so beautiful in the 1910s, 20s, and 30s. So anyway, let's look at a long email from 1906 and remember the good times, and maybe eventually I will find some books on the history of the comic book and manga, and maybe we can relive some of, some of the old magic. Anyway, once again, we start with um, this uh, title, and we, we have a redundant and illegible dialogue. Okay, Nemo wants to come to L Slumberland, but he does not know the way. And then the uh, naked Cupid, I, sh I will show him the way. Come with me, Nemo, and I will show you your valentine, yes? Sounds like he's speaking in translation. Sleepy as Nemo was, when Cupid appeared at his bedside, he quick... Open the door and step inside, be quick, because I want to take you to Slumberland afterwards. Lee arose. Cupid is a business-like little fellow, and in short order, order was escorting Nemo. Remember in the last strip, um, Nemo was a fellow, and I think also Santa Claus was a fellow earlier strips. Go right on in, Nemo, and you will see the way. Through the wilds and wonders of Woo Land, Woo Land's a fun word, the trip was one long, continual maze. It's a very nice design. Isn't that pretty, Nemo? Is it not? No! Of beautiful settings, which caused the heart of Nemo to... Okay, now this panel is kind of insane. Let's keep it. Oh, this is the would-be Valentine's. I forgot. We'll go on further now. I'm glad that he used further instead of farther. So Winsor McKay did understand adverbs, even though he didn't understand punctuation. Okay, so there's actually some writing on here. It's some of it I can't quite read. Pinhead. Wind. I'm it. Proud. Rubber. Stingy, cock, cheek, book on hash. 
beat high until they reached the Chamber of Horrors, as Cupid called it. When he wished that he had not come, he said he could see just such people pass his home every day, and was, and was is one word. This is kind of, this is kind of a funny panel. I, I like the character. This is, this is like the old school uh, Puck magazine, in a way. And it is f fun to see um, the fashion of the turn of the century. This lady with the corset and the giant hat. Um, the old style policeman. Um, he might be an automobile driver with the goggles um, back then. Okay. Now, Nemo, you may choose your valentine. Take your time. They're all pretty. Nemo is either terrified, or maybe he's going to attack the girls, or attack Nemo. Tired of looking at them, but Cupid assured him that the real valentines were soon to come. It was needless to say how Nemo acted, or how feverishly he chose his. And we've got different valentines that are all about Nemo's age. This girl seems a little taller than Nemo. Um... Now you think he's going to go for the blonde because she's in the middle of the panel. So, and that's so, you know, the way the, the way the eye moves, we see this color, this color, and that's in the middle of the panel. But no, Nemo goes for the brunette. Which is fine. Um, because that's a, that's a good surprise. Goodbye, Nemo. We'll see you later. Will you be my valentine, my pretty little maid? Uh, he went for the ballerina. Uh, Valentine, after entering Cupid's bower, bower's a good word, except to say that, May I have the pleasure of your company to Slumberland? Nemo is already uh, setting up a date of sorts, I suppose. The visions of beauty almost pro prostrated him. That's another good word. It was not until, I should like to have you meet my papa and mama someday. Yes, he already wants to take her home. He proceeded on to Slumberland that he discovered that he dis actually Slumberland that he discovered is one word. That Cupid was Oh oh you are only paper no period. You are only cardboard and tinsel. Cupid, Cupid, Cupid. A cheat that his Valentine was merely tinseled paper. Now I do love this Movement here. Windsor McKay is very good with three dimensional movement. If you've seen his animations, uh, Gertie, his Nemo, uh, Lusitania, you'll know that he's good at turning things around. What's the trouble in there, Nemo? Go to sleep. The shock aroused him and his parents also, it seems. So, this is a beautifully done page and it helps to ameliorate the, the tragedy of what comic strips became. But that's all right. There is still much to learn about the comic medium. And I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.